Baby food is quite easy to eat, but once we've had the real food that's represented by the baby food, it really loses its appeal. That is generally how growth works. Once we've grown beyond something, going backwards seems contrary to nature, or at least very undesirable. It seems strange to me that, for some people, our personal growth is accompanied by a desire to mock those who have not grown to the same degree or at the same rate. It seems like a tenuous practice at best, as there's so much uncertainty in when our next great leap of knowledge or understanding will occur. I think the best practice is to continue learning what we can to help those we can and keep moving forward. Hopefully you've been playing around with your calculators trying to figure out complex numbers and complex systems of equations. Because we are going to be generating more systems of equations today. This time we are going to look at the sort of comprehensive technique of mesh current analysis in conjunction with phasor analysis. That should at least make the fraction haters happy. Let's get right to it. Here is a circuit with a single sinusoidal source that contains energy storage components. The fact that there is only one sinusoidal source guarantees there is only one frequency. That means we can do phasor analysis on the circuit. The problem is asking us to determine the time varying current through the 2 nanofarad capacitor. To do that, we will have to convert this circuit to the phasor domain. The time varying current can be written as a phasor current. The current source in this problem is given in terms of the sine function. If you remember back to when we first talked about the phasor diagram, we call the positive x-axis 0 degrees. For consistency's sake, we generally solve the phasor diagrams with cosine of zero on the positive x-axis. So we will convert the sine function to cosine before converting to the phasor domain. Writing the angular frequency off to the side, we can write the current source as 4e to the j minus 90 degrees milliamps. The impedance of the inductor is j times the angular frequency times the inductance resulting in an impedance of j times 4 kilo ohms. The impedance of the capacitor is 1 divided by j times the angular frequency times the capacitance resulting in an impedance of minus j 6.25 kilo ohms. Resistances do not change when we go to the phasor domain, so now the circuit is converted to the phasor domain. To begin mesh current analysis, we will define two mesh currents, IA and IC. I will then define the polarity of all the voltages, keeping in mind the passive sign convention and the direction of the mesh currents. To simplify the loop equations, I am going to define an arbitrary voltage across the current source. That will allow us to write separate KVL equations for loop A and loop C. Writing an equation for loop A beginning in the lower left-hand corner, Corner, there's a voltage drop across the inductor, so we get minus J 4 kilo ohms times IA. There's a voltage drop across the 3 kilo ohm resistor, so we get minus 3 kilo ohms times IA, followed by a voltage increase of VS. Starting in the lower left hand corner of loop C, we have a voltage decrease equal to VS. This is followed by a voltage decrease across the capacitor, which will be equal to minus a negative J 6.25 kilo ohms times IC, followed by a voltage drop of 5 kilo ohms times IC. The current source in this problem is on an inner loop. That means it defines a relationship between two mesh currents. In this case, the current IA goes in the same direction as the current source, and the current IC opposes the current source. So we can write IA minus IC is equal to the value of the current source. Now we have three equations with three unknowns. I am planning on using matrix methods for solving the system of equations, so I am going to rearrange each of the equations to gather terms. Just for fun, let's put the system of equations into an augmented matrix. For a 3x3 three three system, that means the first three columns will be the coefficients of the variables and the last column will be the solutions to the equation. We can then put the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form and the right hand column will represent the solution for each of our variables. Converting each of these to polar form, we have the following. In this case, the solution we are most interested in is IC. The phasor current IC is easily converted back to the time domain expression by taking the magnitude and the phase angle and putting them into the cosine function. So we have the current through the capacitor is 2.41 cosine of 80,000 radians per second times time plus 159 degrees milliamps. For me, the most challenging part of that problem was keeping track of the signs, which is why I define all polarities of the voltages at the beginning of the problem. The next challenge is figuring out how to solve the complex system of equations. When I am setting up and solving the system of equations, I am sitting at a computer, so I use MATLAB. For most of you, you're interested in a tool that you can actually use on an exam. I 
suggest you look up complex systems of equations along with whichever calculator model you have. That of course assumes that you have a graphing calculator capable of solving complex systems of equations. Not all of them can. Look it up in your manual. And by manual, of course, I mean search it online. <laughs> I think we should do one more example of phasers and mesh current analysis, this time with a dependent source. To add another wrinkle, the voltage source for this problem will have a phase angle of minus 115 degrees. The independent source for this circuit is still a sinusoid, and there's only one frequency, and the circuit contains capacitors, so we can use phasor analysis. To determine the time varying current IL of T, the first step, of course, is to convert the circuit into the phasor domain. We will start by writing IL of T as a phasor current IL. Writing the angular frequency off to the side for future reference, the source voltage can be written as 7E to the minus J 115 degrees volts. Note the presence of a phase angle for the source does not increase the challenge of the conversion. The impedance of a capacitor is 1 over J times angular frequency times a capacitance, so for the 1800 picofarad capacitor this results in an impedance of minus J 11.11 kilo ohms. The 0.47 microfarad capacitor will have an impedance of J 42.55 ohms. With that our circuit is converted to the phasor domain. Defining mesh currents as I1, I2, and I3 in a clockwise direction, and then writing the polarities of the voltages across the components, paying attention to the passive sign convention, we are ready to write our mesh equations. Keep in mind that for components like the top capacitor, the direction of the current and the polarity of the voltage must obey the passive sign convention. The voltage across components that have two mesh currents interacting can be written with either polarity as long as they are handled correctly when writing the KVL equations. Starting in the lower left hand corner of loop 1, we have a voltage increase equal to the voltage source and a drop in voltage equal to 12 kilo ohms times I1 minus I3 because the current I1 agrees with the passive sign convention. A decrease in voltage of 9.1 kilo ohms times I1 minus I2, and that completes our loop, so the equation must equal zero. Starting in the lower left-hand corner of loop two, we have a voltage increase of 9.1 kilo ohms times I1 minus I2, that is followed by a decrease equal to minus J 42.55 ohms times I2 minus I3. Pay close attention to the signs and a decrease in voltage equal to the dependent source of 1250 times IL. That is a complete loop, so it must add to zero. For the third loop, again starting in the lower left hand corner, the first thing is a voltage drop of minus J 11.11 kilo ohms I3, followed by a voltage increase of minus J 42.55 ohms times I2 minus I3, and an increase of 12 kilo ohms times I1 minus I3. That completes the loop, so the equation must be equal to zero. This circuit contains a dependent source, so the last equation will be writing the controlling parameter in terms of mesh currents. The branch that has IL going through it touches both loop two and loop three. The current for loop two goes in the same direction as IL, so IL is equal to I2 2 minus I3. Rather than risk algebra, let us arrange each of the equations for direct entry into a matrix. The resulting matrix for this 4x4 system of equations is this. It's probably a good idea for you to stop and check each of the coefficients at this point to verify them for yourself. Assuming we have done that, solving the matrix gives us these four currents. We are trying to determine the current IL of T, so if we grab the phasor current for IL, it is converted back to the time domain by putting the magnitude and phase angle into the cosine function, so IL of T is equal to 470 cosine 50,000 radians per second times time minus 115 degrees microamps. I hope that at this point you see that the circuit analysis in the phasor domain uses exactly the same techniques that we developed when we first learned mesh current analysis. The only thing that has gotten a little messier is the fact that we have complex numbers in our system of equations. While this may be slightly scary, we are at the point of learning this material because we have demonstrated that we are good at math. With a little bit of practice, this will be as easy as all the other things you've learned so far. In this video, we reviewed how to take circuits from the time domain to the phasor domain. Once we were in the phasor domain, we applied mesh current analysis to the circuits in order to determine the mesh currents. We set up our matrices in two different ways for possible solution using calculators or computers or even by hand. Then we took the solution that we obtained using phasor analysis back to the time domain for our final answer. We were able to do this successfully even though our sources for both of the circuits we solved were not cosine functions without phase shifts. We should be able to handle analyzing any circuit where mesh current analysis can be performed. That's all for today. Go out and make it a great one.